I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome to another episode. If you do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Last time we were battling Pokemon, and this time we're killing vampires. Game number 45, Castlevania 64. Released in 1999, this game was developed and published by Konami. Oh man, this one is pretty notorious it seems. I've personally never played it, but it seemed like a lot of people had. The only Castlevania I've ever played is Symphony of the Night, so let's see if this one's anything like that one. The game has a dedicated single player story mode, so we will complete that to beat this game. You can choose to play as either Reinhardt or Carrie. I think some areas of the game are different for each character, but it's not all that different. It's the same for the most part. I went with Reinhardt. The game opens with some lore to set the scene. We're in Transylvania in the 19th century. Everything is calm currently, but people sense that it's coming to an end. Dracula is waking in his castle and Reinhardt knows he must stop him. He is an ancestor of the famous Belmont family after all. It shows a brief cutscene showing the area we're in, then we can start playing. Right away I noticed how high the quality was on Reinhardt's character model. It's pretty impressive graphics given how old the game is. It doesn't take long for this game to throw us into combat with some skeletons waking up for some fun. Reinhardt can attack with his whip or a small sword. The game features platforming with climbing ledges similar to Indiana Jones from before. It is the first 3D entry to this series after all, so it's quite different from what has been released before this. And the game doesn't hold back at all as the first boss shows up almost right away, a gigantic skeleton. The combat, it's kinda cool honestly. It feels like a primitive version of an easier Dark Souls game. Something about fighting a boss way bigger than yourself, it just feels cool, you know? It's an easy fight and I took it down without any trouble. It jumps into a huge ravine which raises some platforms for us to cross safely. Occasionally throughout the game you'll find a white gem which acts as a save point. Feels about right for the time period, although autosave would be so nice in a game like this. Moving on, I crossed a different ravine to find a switch that opened a gate from earlier. A mini boss dude showed up and literally picked me up and slammed me by my foot. What the heck, man? I continued on past the gate and found a bunch of platforms leading to a river down below. I figured, hey, let's see what the swimming is like, and yeah, it looks like Reinhardt doesn't know how to swim. Good to know. A real annoying part of this game that I learned very quickly is the regular enemies will just infinitely spawn in most areas. So it doesn't matter how many times you kill them, they'll just constantly come back and chase you. And it's not like you can just ignore them because they're faster than you and you'll just slowly lose your health. Personally, I think it's not a great design choice to have infinitely spawning enemies in a game, especially one like this. I kept moving further and further through the woods, hitting switches and killing dozens of skeletons until I found myself in a gigantic open round area. It's clear something was about to go down. That giant skeleton from before came back and this time it brought skeletons on motorcycles with it. Isn't this game supposed to be in the 19th century? How do they have these? The fight's really similar to the one from before except this time time as you damage it, it has more and more of itself fall apart. Eventually it just starts kind of hopelessly crawling around on the ground as you finish it off once and for all. It's a really easy fight. This allowed the drawbridge to the ominous looking castle ahead to drop, allowing me to come and go into the castle that presumably is housing Dracula himself. Also, what the heck is up with Reinhardt's choice of shoes? Those things, they just look ridiculous. So now in the castle we find ourselves in a large circular tower-like structure. We must climb up the inner wall of it, but it's not so easy. There are moving platforms, broken staircases, and automatically moving guillotines. They have stained blood on them, but like, come on Dracula, clean these things up, it's disgusting. I'm gonna have to call the homeowners association about this one. Upon making it to the top, I was greeted by yet another boss. They're really going crazy with the start of this game. There's this weird structure with four large fire-breathing snake things tangled up in it. It's honestly super simple, just run around and hit it with the whip a bunch of times. Turns out they were guarding a lever that was used to open the gate in this room. Opening this let me progress even further in the castle. I found my way to another tower with even worse conditions than the last. This one even has fake bridges that flipped over with spikes on the bottom. Dracula's going to get sued by the county board so bad. 
At the top of this one was another lever, just like the last, only this time it showed a cutscene where a vampire, who I can only presume to be Dracula himself, flew in and called me a miserable worm. Don't know why we can't just fight it out here, but he turned into a pile of dust and disappeared. Later, I made my way out of the castle into a courtyard where these freaky wolf dog things attacked me. Come on, what did I ever do to y'all? Then there were more of them that even breathed fire on me. They were guarding the entrance to this large mansion that I went inside after kicking their butts. The opening room of this sure looked a lot like the mansion lobby in Resident Evil 1. Like, <laughs> Well, almost looks identical. I didn't have too much time to admire the room though as a freaky vampire dude showed up and was ready to fight. But I killed it in three hits and it flew away, so not even sure if that was supposed to be a boss or just a regular enemy or what. So talk about the music in this game. It's honestly pretty lacking. There is music in most areas, but it's quiet and kind of bland. It's disappointing because I know previous Castlevania games had amazing soundtracks. I guess it's kind of hard to get music onto the N64 though with the cart space limits. I made my way into the mansion and found a bedroom with a ridiculous looking bed. Some old dude named Vincent showed up and he's just got crosses everywhere and he's wearing a trench coat. He wants to know what we're doing here and we're like, come on man, I'm here to kill Dracula. And he's like, nah, you're a noob, I'm gonna do it. We tell him to leave for his own safety but then he hits us with the no you. Hopefully we can set our differences and work together, you know? Talking to him after this altercation has him tell us about a woman in the Rose Garden at dawn every night. Sounds like a clue. I ventured further into the mansion after that old dude yelled at us to find a room with a scroll lying on the ground. Some creepy dude in a suit comes up and is like, hey, have you seen a scroll around here? Uh, literally look on the ground in front of you? He says it's fate that we met because he's a demon and wants to sell us items. A true businessman, looks to sell people things even in an abandoned castle. Mostly we'll just be using him to purchase food to heal. So now came the first annoying part. I went into every room I could and nothing was really happening. The only thing I had to go on was Vincent telling me about the woman in the rose garden. I found a room that sure looked like a rose garden but no one was here. He mentioned Dawn though and it turns out the game has an in-game clock. I have these items called sun cards that instantly advance the time to 6am, however this did nothing. Then began nearly an hour of me running around hopelessly trying different things to advance the game, but nothing would work. Part of me wondered if my game was glitched. Finally though, I figured out what needed to be done. You had to be in the rose garden room when the time hit. Also, according to this game, dawn is at 3am, which uh... I'm pretty sure that's not the case, but whatever. The sun card is worthless because it takes it 3 hours past the time we need, and if you're not in the room exactly when it hits 3am, then no luck. Anyway, when I did this, a cutscene played where a woman named Rosa came in to water the roses. Fitting name she has. She calls them white roses, but they're clearly red. Then we see she's watering them with blood. Oh god, she's a vampire. She says we should run away, but she's cool with us trying to kill Dracula and tells us we need to go to the archives. We need a key though, and Vincent has it, so off to him we go. Since it's 3am, he's asleep in that giant bed, so we just have to wait until he wakes up. Once he does, we get the key and we can finally go further inside. The archives room was literally only used to give me a different key to the garden. Why couldn't I have just gotten this key in the first place? Oh well. With this key in my possession, naturally I went to the garden. Some little kid in a weird cape was out there and he's like, Oh my god, help me! The vampires burned my home and killed my family and brought me here. He says he can't remember anything else. Reinhardt is all like, oh man, this is totally normal and not suspicious. But then some scary looking dogs show up and Malice ran off. These dogs, they're just so annoying to deal with. You can only knock them out for a few seconds, not kill them. And if they hit you, you'll be stunlocked for about 4 seconds, which is just overkill. If that wasn't bad enough, this Frankenstein looking dude with a chainsaw shows up and he's ready to cause harm. This guy combined with the stunlock from the dogs is just miserable. Unfortunately for me, I hadn't saved since I first entered the mansion, so all the way back to the start I go. This part actually ended up being incredibly difficult to get through. You can knock out the chainsaw dude, but that only delays the inevitable. Malice decided to get trapped in the middle of a hedge maze, and you basically have to memorize the way through it by just dying several times. Even if you do save, the save point is quite far away, so you have to run for a few minutes to make it back for another attempt. It felt a lot like dying to a boss 
boss in Dark Souls. After basically an hour of trying, I found where Malice ran off to and escaped this maze. Reinhardt just sends him off to the forest on his own. You know, where there's infinitely spawning skeletons looking for blood. I'm sure he'll be fine. There was a save point right after this part, so I felt extreme relief that I didn't have to deal with Chainsaw Man and the Wolves ever again. That's your new band name, by the way. The other side of this maze led to this underground area with a giant open room and a single coffin inside. That doesn't look dangerous or anything. It shows a cutscene of a woman falling from the ceiling, then a vampire shows up and wants to fight. This boss, it's pretty easy. It's like the fight from before, except it can sometimes shoot lightning as well as jump from the ceiling in a wild spinning attack. Once we beat him though, phase 2 starts. The woman from before is now a vampire and running around like that thing from the grudge. She's super fast and acrobatic jumping around everywhere, but it's mostly easy. After beating them, we find out this isn't just any ordinary coffin. It opens up to reveal a secret path. This leads to some underground mine area. I rode an elevator down to where a stream of water was and some lady rose from it. Oh, she looks friendly. Oh god, she's a spider. Time to burn the entire mine down. Down here, instead of infinitely spawning skeletons, we're dealing with spawning spider ladies. I ventured further into the mine where I found a red gondola I could ride on. This thing was very slow and you had to just sit there while it moved you to a new part of the mine. That doesn't stop the game from sending obstacles at you though. It's kind of unfair because the platform's tiny and you can barely move to dodge all these bars coming at you. If it hits you, instant death. The gondola just kept taking me in circles and I wasn't really sure what was wrong. I ended up getting off at the first platform it passes and after waiting for like 20 seconds, a blue gondola shows up. This apparently goes down a separate path which leads to the exit. It feels so relieving to find a save point once you get past a frustrating section, you know? When we exit, we're in a room with a beam of light shining down from above. Rose is here too and she just walks into it and starts burning to death. Reinhardt yanks her out of the way and is like, what the heck's wrong with you? She's sad that she's a vampire and wants us to slay her, but Reinhardt refuses. I think he likes her. She's like, wow, you suck. You're never going to be able to kill Dracula. Gee. Thanks, Rosa. Now we're in the underground dungeon area or whatever of the castle, and those skeletons on motorcycles are back. Seriously, how do these things exist? Like, it's such a random thing to throw in the game and it just doesn't fit at all. A few rooms in, I found a super sad statue, or maybe it's angry. I don't know, the tears are red. Either way, those tears turn into a red monster thing, but it died in like two hits, so I'm not sure why the game made such a big deal out of it. Later, there was this room with a bunch of vials of nitroglycerin on some shelves. It said I can run fine with it, but if I jump or take damage, it'll explode. Decided to test it out for myself, and yeah, it definitely kills you right away. And thus began the very tedious journey of carrying the nitroglycerin all the way to the bottom without jumping or taking a single hit. I hated this part. It reminds me of those don't jump levels in Mario Maker, like it's just so slow paced. Like there was this one part where you had to walk along the slowest moving cog ever. It's definitely a unique idea for a task to do, but just not that fun in execution. Eventually I did make it to the bottom and I set it next to a giant wall in this big arena. It said I needed to find a Mandragora to detonate it though, so back up we go. It took me quite a while to figure this part out. It seemed like there was nowhere else to go, although there was one room blocked off with hallways by fire barriers coming from the walls, but no matter where I looked or what I did, I couldn't find anything to shut them off. It ended up being really stupid though, because all I had to do was just slide past it. I never bothered trying, so uh, that one was my bad. Even if you do get hit by the fire, you barely take any damage and you just run past. This led to the other side of the room with the nitro vials and that kid Malice shows up again. I thought we told him to get lost. He's acting weird now though. He's laughing and talking about souls being sacrificed to the Dark Lord. Something's wrong with him, but uh, he's just growing up, you know. It's probably just a phase. Then I found some lizard man who says he's cursed and stuck this way. He gives us a key to the torture chamber where he says the Mandragora can be found. So down to the torture chamber I went. There were some random vampires in here and there's like a large swinging blade in the middle. At least there's a cozy looking fireplace though, so you feel at home while you're getting tortured. I did find a shelf with a bunch of mandragoras on it though. I used this to blow up a smaller wall where there were flames and it led to an observatory room with a puzzle. The sun is in the center and we have to choose the correct numbers from 1 through 9. You learn what those numbers are from the crying statues from earlier. Also, just want to throw it out there, there's 9 numbers here, not 8. 
Pluto is a planet. Like, come on, just put an asterisk next to it and say it's grandfathered in. You can't tell Pluto like, hey, you're a planet like the cool dudes. And then suddenly be like, oh, turns out you're not a planet. Like, think about Pluto's feelings here. I'm just, just saying, side note. Anyway, this puzzle broke the seal that was on that wall in the huge arena, so time to go blow that one up. I went and blew it up, and there was a giant crystal inside. Activating the crystal brought the giant ox on the ground to life. Boss time. This was the first difficult fight of the game. It has a ton of HP unlike the others. It can charge at you as well as shoot lasers with big explosions, and if it hits, it takes around a third of your HP. After you get its health down a bit, its butt starts decaying, leaving it with only bones. It's pretty gross, honestly. The holy water was really useful here because it deals a damage over time effect, and the boss always stops when it shoots lasers. Once it gets down to like a quarter HP, its butt falls off entirely. This was actually really sad because it just starts crawling around slowly and helplessly after this but you have to kill it and i don't know i just i didn't really like this part it's defenseless once you get it that far but you gotta do it to beat the game Almost right after this, I ran into Rosa in a big empty room. Oh god, Rosa, no, don't do it! Some grim reaper dude shows up and then Rosa's ready to fight, and she's got a sword too. She's really easy though, kinda just stands there and occasionally shoots flaming roses at us. When you beat her, she's like, finish me, please! But Reinhardt's like, no, I hate all vampires and I'm sworn to kill them, but not you, cause you're attractive. The grim reaper takes her away and that's the end of that. I went further into the castle and found myself in the Duel Tower. This had a series of square arenas where a vampire mini-boss would appear, and it's a fight to the death. This wasn't enough though, as I also had to do some intense platforming to make my way to the next arena. By far the most annoying part of this was the spinning blades. Those things are like straight out of Fall Guys. They barely damage you, but they can completely overcome your movement to force you to fall to your death. And it happened a lot. Not to mention, each time you die, you go all the way back to the start. After falling countless times, I finally got through and made it to the Tower of Execution. This was a room with a giant pool of lava underneath and many swinging blades to knock you off. The worst part though was how laggy it was. I'm not exactly sure why, but this area of the game cut the frame rate in half at a minimum, but even lower at some points. Thankfully, the room's pretty easy to get through though, so the lag doesn't affect it that much. Finally, I made my way on top of the castle, and who was here? None other than the Grim Reaper dude. For whatever reason, Rosa jumps in front of us to block a blade. I could have just moved out of the way, but oh well. Rip Rosa, I guess. Reinhardt is upset because he was going to ask her out after all this was over. Now it's time to fight. The battle with death, it's pretty cool. He flies around and he's constantly swinging blades through the air at you. By far the craziest attack though is he summons this giant fish out of a demonic portal. Where in the world did this fish come from and why can he summon it? In the end though, it's not too difficult and we send him back where he came from. Now there's not much left in the way between us and Dracula. All I had to do was climb up this gigantic clock tower. This section was pretty neat, tons of just pure platforming and the physics, they're pretty smooth. Especially compared to something like Indiana Jones. After the tower, it was just a bunch of gigantic staircases. The design of this castle is just awful. Like, Dracula must hate having to leave to go to the grocery store or something. That merchant dude from earlier shows up and says he's leaving and we'll never see him again. Kinda sucks because you can't buy any more healing items, but I had enough to make do. After one final staircase, I had done it. I was in Dracula's lair. There was a large coffin that blasted itself open and he showed himself. There wasn't much dialogue and he just immediately attacked me. You know, I can appreciate him getting straight to the point like that. This fight's pretty wild. He teleports all over the room and has many different attacks. He can use a fire breath or pull us in with a vortex or send out a big earthquake pulse thing. If he pulls you in, he starts feasting and it basically fully heals him. For whatever reason, hitting him in his body barely hurts him, but if you jump and hit him in the face, it does big damage and interrupts his current attack. Actually, I won on my second try. It wasn't too hard at all. And he's like, oh, you haven't won just yet. Then he sends out a Big blast of energy and his cape burns on the ground. Oh god, the castle's falling apart. Time to run. On the way down, someone shoots an arrow at us and there's like this flying horse and... Hey, isn't that Malice riding it? What the heck? We make our way down and Malice is waiting for us. Oh man, what a twist. He was Dracula the entire time and Reinhardt's like, Oh god, he's hotter than me. I never stood a chance with Rosa. Apparently that other vampire was his servant and killing it allowed Dracula to escape from Malice's body. So now it's time for the true fight with Dracula. 
This fight was honestly really annoying. He randomly teleports around the area, usually to one of the four corners, then he sends out an attack and teleports again. The only realistic option here is just try to guess where he'll go. There's no way to tell, even in the speedrun this part is just pure luck apparently. It's a pretty easy fight honestly, it just takes a while to kill him. After killing him this giant beam of light appears and Malice is back. He's like, oh my god, where am I? What happened? But then Vincent shows up. Hey, where have you been? You've been gone since literally the very beginning of the game. What gives? How'd you get through all that platforming anyway? He throws holy water on Malice and apparently it's Dracula trying to trick us. Dracula's like, oh, I'm gonna show you my true form. Then we're transported to this deserted wasteland somehow and he shows up like a big dragon centipede centaur hybrid thing. I don't know, it's weird. Isn't he supposed to be a vampire? Like, this is getting out of hand. Unlike the last two fights, this one's pretty hard. All of his attacks have massive areas they hit you and they hurt extremely bad. It's hard to get close enough to hit him without being hit by something. When you do hit him, he counterattacks, and I'm not sure if you can even dodge it. It takes a lot of food to win this one. My first attempt didn't go so hot and yeah, I got wrecked. And of course, losing brings you all the way back. I had to fight both the Servant and Dracula's first form all over again. Next attempt, I got his health down a bit and he summoned two fire dragons to fly around the arena. As if I didn't already have enough to deal with, man. As long as I healed every time I took damage, I was fine. And after quite a bit of trading hits back and forth, Dracula was dead. He dies in this insane earthquake explosion animation and then we're outside the castle somehow and it's sinking into the water. After that, rose petals start falling out of the sky and oh my god it's Rosa. Literally no clue how she lived through this but she's also a human now too. Reinhardt's like hey so uh you want to grab a coffee and she's like uh yeah I just kind of want to go home. Ouch. Poor Reinhardt. Then the credits roll. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Castlevania 64. The only one I had played going into this was Symphony of the Night. And man, this one's way different. It definitely feels like they were just buying into the hype of, oh, N64, we gotta make 3D, yeah. The final product, uh, it's decent. I didn't mind the game at all, but it's also not the best thing ever. The boss fights were by far the best part, but some of them weren't that fun either. Especially the first form of Dracula. The graphics were amazing, but the music it was pretty lacking, and the story was pretty lacking too. Like, Vincent seems like he's going to be a critical character at first, but he just disappears for the entire game until the very, very end. It's just weird, I don't know. I gave it a 5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 6.5 out of 10 for difficulty, mostly because of some of the tougher platforming sections. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot, and if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, thanks for watching, and here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. 341 games on the list. It could be any of them. Maybe even Castlevania again. But you never know. Let's find out. 3, 2, 1. 172, what's that? We are playing Micro Machines 64 Turbo. What the heck is that?